It was in the late 1990s that amendments to the Safe Drinking Water Act required the EPA to develop a regulation to balance the risks between the presence of microbial pathogens and DBPs. The result was the Stage 1 Rule for Disinfectants and Disinfection Byproducts, abbreviated DBPR, finalized in 1998. According to the EPA, the rule establishes maximum residual disinfectant level goals and maximum residual disinfectant levels for three chemical disinfectants, chlorine, chloramine, and chlorine dioxide. It also establishes maximum contaminant level goals and maximum contaminant levels for total trihalomethanes, haloacetic acids, chlorite, and bromate. Additionally, the rule sets requirements for utilities under direct influence of surface water and that use conventional filtration to remove specified percentages of organic materials measured as total organic carbon, or TOC, from the source water. It's important to remove organic materials from the source water prior to pre-chlorination because they can react with disinfectants to form DBPs. The two main groups of disinfection byproducts that are regulated are trihalomethanes, abbreviated THM, and haloacetic acids, or HAA. The four THMs and the five HAAs act as indicators for DBP occurrence in a water system. Therefore, the reduction of these two groups indicates a reduction in overall DBPs. The stage two rule put in place in 2006 builds upon the earlier rule and works to provide additional public health protection from DBPs. According to the EPA, under the Stage 2 DBPR, systems will conduct an evaluation of their distribution systems known as an Initial Distribution System Evaluation to identify the locations with high disinfection byproduct concentrations. These locations will then be used by the systems as the sampling sites for Stage 2 DBPR compliance monitoring. <laughs>